All right, we're gonna talk about Audemars in this video. I'm gonna explain a bunch of prices. So anybody shopping for one of these beautiful timepieces, I'm gonna tell you exactly what's going on. First and foremost, these two watches that I'm holding up right now are some of the rarest in the out of the Audemars collection right now that's uh, currently being produced or is out. Um, there's about only four of these in the Diamond District that I know of, all right? And I know up and down the Diamond District. Very rare timepiece, and I'll explain why in a second. And last, lastly, in this video, I'm going to talk about the chandelier, all right? This just got in, all right? It's a chandelier Audemars, but this is a real one. There's a lot of fake ones going on right now with aftermarket things that are very, very uh, upsetting to the Audemars brand that they're ultimately even suing vendors for. So... I'm gonna to explain to you what's happening there because a lot of big names, they got the chandelier, but they don't know what they really, really have. And I'll explain that towards the end of this video. First and foremost, let's talk prices on some of these uh, timepieces, all right? So there's a bunch of Audemars here. You can take a look at all of them right now, all right? This is a, a sample of the collection, all right, uh, that we have available for you guys. But uh, I have specifically pulled these out because they tell a little bit of a story. Now let's talk about the offshore right here, all right? This is something that is an affordable timepiece right now, very, very popular, highly recommended starter Audemars that you can get a big boy watch, is extremely popular. Two different ones, all right? 45,000 over here, 32,500 over here, okay? It's the same watch, take a look flower setting over here or is a different type of setting over here okay it's a different type of pave all right this is a flower more clustered in more carrots on this piece all right this one's about 25 carats on it this is probably around 20 or something like that all right i don't have the exact carry weight on me but uh that should be around there so you got an extra five carats on this watch because of the tighter setting and 45,000 or 32,000, right? If I tell you 45,000 and then show, someone shows you this and say, hey, listen, track's full of shit. I got this for 32. Realize that it's not the same thing. The setting on these watches matter. It's very, very important. All the quality, all the diamonds, all the specifications. I could get it to you for 28,000, but you don't want to pay 28,000 for a watch like this unless you're getting it from a personal friend or a personal customer or something like that, okay? So that's what's happening on that end. Now, we're gonna talk about one of my favorites. We're gonna jump up in price and jump into the future, but this is one of my favorite watches out here, okay? You are looking at a pound of gold in 18 carats. How much is it? All right, it's another rare collectible timepiece, 58,000. Wanna ice it out? This is what it looks like iced out, all right? So mystery solved, 85,000 on this one. Okay, 58,000 here, I sit out, 85,000. So when you're shopping, right, if you're a big time rapper and you're doing this and you're shopping with the big time jeweler or whatever you're doing, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing you a, a personal favor and I'm giving you some insight so you could compare and shop with some confidence so you don't have to go in there and someone's going, yeah, yeah, I got you, did it, did it. You know what I'm saying? That's not happening anymore, okay? Now you know this is 85,000, 58,000, that's the market price and that's it. That's how I do business. I don't know how anybody else does it. That's what I'm doing. So, pound of gold, all right? Let's talk a little bit about something else. This is a plain Jane. This is fully iced. It's more expensive, it's got diamonds, it's got labor, it's a really good price on this. Same exact watch. Which one is the more important one? Oh, well, that's a matter of taste. This watch is a more collectible watch. It has more buyers, all right? The plain Janes have more buyers. There's a lot of buyers for this too. So as far as value and retaining value is concerned, I would probably say the plain Jane. But how, however, if you've got $50 million in your bank account, you're not really particularly worried about the appreciation of your $58,000 watch. All right, uh, that's not the, the most important thing in your life. You wanna get what you wanna get and you might wanna get a fully iced $85,000 watch because you're not poor, right? You're not trying to save as much as possible. You're trying to get what you want. Well, that's what you do. So fully iced versus plain Jane, right? If you're the type of person that's uh, shrewd with their business and frugal, you wanna retain your value and you wanna get it plain Jane. But if you wanna live it up and you wanna pop a bottle of champagne, you get this, right? If you're at the club, you know, if you get a bottle of uh, uh, Hennessy, you'll get you way more drunk than a bottle of champagne, which is probably gonna be around the same price, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you wanna get the most drunk for your dollar. You might wanna get what you want, and you might be a bottle of champagne. This would kind of be a bottle of champagne, and this would be a bottle of Hennessy, okay? Which one, you're at the club, which one do you wanna get? So, 
that's happening there now i want to show you one of my favorite royal oaks right here all in rose gold and then another one in uh stainless steel okay take a look Ninety-five thousand dollars. Okay, ninety-five thousand dollars for this particular timepiece. It is, um, and you, you have this one right here is sixty-five thousand. Okay, this is a two-tone stainless steel and rose gold. The beautiful thing about these two pieces is they have a little bit of an extra touch to them. Okay, the baguettes on the side. All right, beautiful. Now this one's got the baguettes in the bezel. All of them are measured, all of them are properly done, all right? The factory that uh, we send these watches to does an incredible job of icing them out, all right? These people take their time, flower setting, VS diamonds, all right? So that's that. You got the two different price ranges there. The two-tone, the fully iced, again, this is a different type of bezel. You have your choice. You could order this watch with this type of bezel too. All right, that's up to you. If you wanted to order it, you could order it. If you wanted something on hand, on hand. Now that's with the baguettes. You could also have this one with uh, something different. This is an aftermarket dial, okay? Arabic numerals, all right? They're $65,000, all right? It's the Arabic numeral one, okay? Arabic numerals, all right? Uh, they originated in a couple of different places. It's the combination of different types of numerals, but um, you know, originally they came to western society from arabia and that's why they're called arabic numerals all right and this is the original uh script that they were written in so this is a beautiful timepiece that kind of commemorates that and commemorates that journey of numbers okay this is a beautiful piece now there's the stick one right here same thing same timepiece all right sixty five thousand dollars Sixty-five thousands. If you want to keep it simple with the red sticks, we got one with the with the regular sticks. The difference here now we're going into the chrono world. All stainless steel, but with the chronographs. Chronographs are extremely collectible. Twenty-two carats. Uh, in this one, forty-five thousand dollars. All right, so that's like a jump up from uh, some of the other ones, from the other steel ones. It's a forty-five thousand dollars with the chronos. Chronos, very very nice. Okay, so let's go to this watch with the plain Jane, okay? All rose gold, all right? 50,000, 50,000 for this piece right here. Um, let's see what else we could talk about. Ah, this is a really, really beautiful one. Another collector's piece. Look at the finishing, the, the brush finishing on this. $40,000 on this Royal Oak, okay? $40,000. So before we go any further, all right, we're gonna talk about the chandelier in a second, but before we go there, I wanna throw you the price on on this uh, little moon phase right here, okay? If you wanna purchase this little moon phase, it's 36 millimeter, $30,000, a beautiful collector's item, fully iced, right? It used to be, it's a unisex, okay? Or right, right now, it's probably a lady size, but it could also be worn by men. It's a unisex size, you know, if you, it depends on your wrist and depends on your style. Because Audemars is making big, big watches, you know, that's their look, but if you wanted a unisex, that would, uh, that would probably be it, okay? Now, Chandelier. We just got this in. That's why I'm doing this video on the chandelier. Jesse, yes, sir. I, I need your help here for a second. Yeah. Okay, so I know that the plain Jane skeleton face is very, very rare. It's $135,000. It's a rare watch. It's going up. All right, the retail is way less than $135,000. You can get it for, from Audemars for less than $135,000. You just got to wait four years. All right, so now it's on the market. Everybody wants it. So we sent this watch out. Hundred and thirty-five thousand dollar watch to get iced out. How much is it now? This one's two seventy-five, two hundred seventy-five thousand. Two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay. Um, how long ago did we send it? How long did it get to, to take this guy to set this watch? Full full production time on this was seven months. Okay. So it's crazy, crazy. So time chandelier it. seven months. I gotta give him some information about that, Jesse, so they understand exactly what's going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seven months of icing out with um, uh, the one of the best setters in the business. All right, so it's a complicated job. It's one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars investment, two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars with the diamonds. So you don't want to have a Tom, Dick, and Harry trying to put diamonds in here. Right? There's different setters involved with different things. This is an extremely complicated job on an extremely beautiful collector's watch. And it's, you know, what they call a chandelier, so we did it. So if they wanted a, a timepiece like this or any of these, I personally highly recommend Jesse. He's a great dude. We've been working for, together for a long, long time. 
So if you need to broker a deal on any of these time pieces, I'll definitely be there to support you on that. But Jesse is your guy to get things going, all right? So Jesse, where can they reach you if they wanna get yep, this going? You can hit my phone in my pocket at 914-461-5833. 914-461-5833. Let me just tell you guys a story about the chandelier. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So let me just tell you guys a story of the chandelier because there's a lot of big names out there going, ah, chandelier. It's just, I don't know what they're exa exactly they're saying or the, or the terminology that they're using. They got a chandelier or whatever. Here's what's happening. Okay. This is an extremely complicated watch to make. So what are they doing? They decided somewhere in Hong Kong to pop the mechanism out and put it in an aftermarket case, okay? That's pre-made for this type of thing. So that's what's happening out there. That's a, uh, a chandelier that's not real, all right? Audemars is very, very upset about that. They're, they're hitting vendors and there's a lot of lawsuits going around because they're using the Audemars name and they're putting it on an aftermarket case. So if you're one of these guys or whatever it is, the important thing is to know what you have. All right, what you, what you have is not an Audemars. You have an Audemars mechanism inside an aftermarket case which is, says Audemars but isn't one. And Audemars is upset about that, and rightly so. This company is over 100 years old. It was founded in 1875 by Audemars and Paget. okay? So these two individuals founded this firm and uh, they passed it from generation to generation. They did an incredible job of it. And they're, it's it's like a, it's an extremely important Swiss watch company. All right, it's a, it's north of Geneva, in a, in a mountain valley where they founded this firm. And it's not fair for them to take their mechanism out, and put it in an aftermarket thing. It's one thing to put diamonds. All right, you bought a plain Jane and you want to ice out. That's your personal business. All right, that's how icing out watches work. But for some manufacturer to take a aftermarket case, put a mechanism in there, and say that's a chandelier, and give it to somebody, and not tell their client that their whole case is aftermarket. That's fucked up, and that's not something I even touch or do. And there's no point of destroying the watch industry by doing that. So, everybody who got that out there, this is an Audemars explanation. This is round one. I'm gonna tell you guys the history of this watch brand in the near future. I also wanna mention my shirt is made by a good friend of mine, Paranoia, one of one. I'm gonna tag him because he made me this shirt. Anybody, graphic designers, anybody wanna work with me, I'm down to work with people. It made me an incredible shirt. I wanted to give him a shout out on that. You got the prices on your Audemars. You know what the story is, the chandelier. Okay, let's not destroy the watch business. Okay, we're icing out watches, that's cool. But going going into aftermarket bullshit cases that are made in Hong Kong and writing the word Audemars on them, that's not cool. That's gonna destroy the entire industry. Let's not do that. And if you're gonna do that, tell your client. Don't tell them, yo, I got you this and this and that when you got them some bullshit, okay? That's my personal advice. I like to, uh, you know, set the tone for the business. I don't want to step on anybody's toes or, or burst anybody's bubble. But on the other hand, if you're buying a watch for however many hundred thousand dollars and then you realize months later that you got an aftermarket case, that's not really a good look for you or the jeweler or the industry. So that's not it for me. I'm gonna, you know, call it out when I see that happening. Tracks NYC, shirt by Paranoia 101. Jesse got you on the watches. If you need them, we're here in the Diamond District between 5th and 6th Avenue. You saw some rare watches. I want everybody to get to business quickly. I don't have a lot of time in the day, neither do you. Anybody who has money, this is the reason why we wear watches because we need to keep track of time, okay? And it's, no, it's a waste of time for me to go, ah, this is 65, but it's really 45, but it's 55, but it's this and that, forget it. I gave you the upfront prices with a minuscule markup that's impossible for anybody else to give you. It sets the tone, it, it cuts people out, but that's the nature of the business nowadays. It's the internet, it's the age of Amazon, it's the age of get the price, get the item, bare minimum, you want it, yes or no. That's it, all right? Track some IC, give it the best that I can and give you the best that I could. So I hope you guys enjoy it, thank you.